All right. We have a TriMet presentation here. The Transit-Oriented Development Presentation. Now, before I start on this, let me mention that I was just looking through this budget to come up with this. And every, every time I look at the budget, I just, I can't believe what a crime syndicate it really is over there. How they soak the poor people and they have all of this wasteful crap going on there, including this. Okay. Uh, so you have two point, you see that? $2.8 million dealing with transit-oriented development. Let me, let me give you some background on what transit-oriented development actually is. Some of you know that Portland, Oregon is, has been the hub of New World Order type thinking, and that's they try it out at TriMet first. I'm not sure why Portland has that distinction, but it certainly does. For example, the transit oriented and a development all started at TriMet. The light rail, the Church of Light Rail started at TriMet and then spread around the country. This this electronic tracking system they call a fare payment system, but in reality it's a tracking system. Started at TriMet. They are the leaders of bells and whistles. Transit, eh. It used to be pretty good in the 80s, early 90s, but it's just been it's been stuck in neutral well before the uh, the so-called scandemic, before they decided to shut down the world, fuck up everybody's life, screw up everything, which is why TriMet's all screwed up now. But that's that was by plan. So this number here represents the amount of money your 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 payroll tax. 2.79 million. So that represents uh, 100,000 per operator. So 10 operators is a million. And 20 operators is 2 million. So that's 28 operators right here. Like they could have instead of this. Now, the transit oriented development. Is basically what used to be called Agenda 21. For those of you who have been following all of these events for as long as me, Agenda 21 was where they wanted to pack and stack. So they want to pack you in these buildings. See these buildings here? And they want you to all ride on government provided transportation. This is the vision of the future is no more people in single family houses. You don't get to have a house with a yard and a lawn and a backyard. They want this is their vision of the future is this and it's a hellish future. You don't want to live in one of these buildings. I guarantee you I lived in an apartment building for 16 years in Portland and I was I was the landlord there. <laughs> and let me tell you even that was not anything like owning your own home which is really the best way to live is to have your own home with your own car so not only is this a, it's now called agenda 2030 by the way and it's all part of this idea that they're going to have everybody locked into these telephone calls in the city so and i'm against all of this i'm i'm against all of the shit that TriMet is into. It steals money. This is just one other way they steal money from providing decent transit for specialty projects. And I just I just looked through this budget here. And uh, let me tell you, every time I look through this, I just want to kill myself because it's they just get away with such murder. There's so much pork here. It's just, just look at all that pork. All these six-figure salaries here. Not one of them got... Not one of these people. Engineering, construction, man. Look at all this. Um, not one of these people had a salary decrease or a decrease in staffing. 
if you look through the budget, you'll see that almost every department has increased from 2021. See, this is the Engineering Construction Administration. 2021, 360,000. Now it's 519,000, not quite double. But you can go through this and you can see how everything has gone up, except for your bus service, which has been slashed with a policy and planning development. Oh, wait, that went down a little bit. Wow, look at that. The big, the big ticket items are in the other. Oh, design and construction, 655,000, 2021. 1.9 million. I mean, you can just you can just go on and on and on and see how much they lied about their so-called fiscal cliff. So I I I don't think this is when this is when tra uh, transit systems went lost their ability to provide transit and became interested in, in property development. And property development is a developer scheme with with the ultimate idea that everybody will be packed into the stacked into the buildings and packed into these trains to get around which is just horrible let's let's listen to a little of it uh, uh good afternoon everybody thank you for joining uh and then they have an australian guy as the, their transit oriented development director for portland i mean they've gone over the deep end when it comes to the diversity over there i mean i'm okay with diversity but not when that be not when diversity is your major that's what running everything is that idea. That's that's a very poor way to run things. Um, as Brandy said, my name is Guy Ben. I'm the program manager for TOD. Um, I joined TriMet in February of 2020. I didn't bring COVID to the agency. <laughs> it sort of felt a little bit like that because um, we were banished and sent home. Somebody laughed at that joke. We know you didn't bring it. It was intentionally brought. It was, it was all intentional. From my point of view, I, I, all of that was intentional to destroy society, put us back into serfdom, and that's what they're doing. Or as we speak, they're they're involving wasting billions on a war that's none of our business, because war is how they keep. If you go read some of Huxley, you'll see that it's the war is not meant to be run one. It's meant to go on forever. And that's how they keep hierarchical society in place. Okay, all these people in the ditch are in the ditch because our our beloved leaders waste all this money on on themselves. The military industrial complex uh, north of Grumman stock went up fifty percent. Such a criminal. We live in such a criminal society run by actual criminals, and it even includes all the way down to the bottom level. I, I consider a trimet like the the very bottom level. The trimet's unusual because there's no accountability there. They set this up in, especially to avoid any kind of accountability to the voters. It was set up completely so that you can't do anything. And we saw the perfect example of that at the last board meeting. Their own survey said it was going to hurt poor people. 99% of the responses said no on the fair increase. But did they care about that? No. And then you had Ozzy run his little side psyop which was kind of fun for me to engage with him in that one. Um, you know, that trying to point the finger at Opal, I mean, it's, I don't know how many people fell for it, but, you know, I, I over at Bike Portland, where that idiot Jonathan Mouse uh, it polluted with Ozzy, if you look at the comments, some people think that's okay, you know. They actually they think that pointing the finger at Opal was okay. It's like, are you daft or are you just an apologist or what? wasn't about opal who, who cares about opal i offered to pay people 50 dollars to go tell ozzy he's a piece of shit okay and what are you going to do huh so i i, I can do that right because i'm not a non-profit it was all bullshit and i can't believe the opal people didn't come back at him hard hard and fast but they didn't they didn't i'm not sure what they're thinking over there i'm about two weeks after I started. Um, my background um, uh, is actually in commercial real estate. Um, oh, and under course. Doug Kelsey, the previous general manager, um, I was lucky enough when I applied and, and was accepted to manage a TOD program with Bob Hastings at the time, who was the agency architect. 
Um, we came in, I came in, there was already some TOD guidelines drafted, uh, and then we took those to the board in May of 2020. Um, and this is really, this, what we're presenting today, the TriMet Regional TOD Plan, is sort of the next step and the manifestations of those guidelines, how TriMet is going to implement them uh, and, you know, what the processes are, what our approach is. Um, uh, before we get too far in as well, always good, let's, let's make sure everyone understands when we're talking about Todd, they understand what we're talking about. It's not the individual, it is transit-oriented development, uh, which we consider to be the creation of compact, walkable, pedestrian-oriented, mixed-use communities. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's what it is. That's Agenda 2030 now. Centered around high quality transportation systems. Except there is no high quality transportation. It doesn't exist anywhere in the country. Anywhere, nowhere. Not TriMet, not anywhere else. So they, they, they've got the cart before the horse here. And don't forget, it's, it's a developer scam because they give these properties to developers. They develop the properties and they make billions, millions of, out, of, out of this stuff. This is a profit-making scam. It's not something that is like the by the benevolence of, of the of the planners. They're, oh, yeah, we're going to help you with this. This is completely useless. Uh, and there's many, many reasons why we want to do this, but it hopefully makes shorter trips, better lifestyles, and a more efficient use of resources. Yeah, 15-minute cities, everybody. And that's what they want. Um, yeah, with me. And it's up to all of us to reject all of this. Reject all of it. Don't cooperate in your in the least. Uh, there was, you know, maybe one out of ten people who didn't do the shots, and we got ostracized mil hugely because we didn't go along with that. And then we turned out to be right, and somehow all of that, those liars have been able to walk free from the lies they told and the destruction they wreaked on people's lives because that's the world we live in. It's a world owned and operated by a criminal society, a criminal elite, all the way down to this level, all the way down to the very bottom level, which is TriMet. Yeah, very lucky. Uh, when Bob Hastings retired, who I think many of you knew, um, uh, we advertised his position or we were able to keep it open and we're very lucky to steal Fiona from ECMP uh, and she is now indispensable uh, is uh, my eyes and ears is, is a sort of co co the other member of the team um, uh, and we also uh, have have half stolen miles Anderson who many of you will probably know he's been managing the move to one main place he also has a role within space planning when he's not free he has a planning background we try and lean on him for his planning expertise as well yeah what would we do without the planner? The planners who've basically destroyed our entire society. Um, so, uh, why why is Trimer interested in promoting TOD? Oh, look, and, and really, this is, um, uh, as Fiona likes to say, this is what we call Trimetville. This is uh, the world where TOD exists. Trimetville. <laughs> this is exactly right. This is exactly what they're doing. This is the thing that's important to them. More than anything else. I mean, I like to waste money on information and technology and all kinds of contracts that don't make sense, but this is where they really want. Focus efforts is on this shit instead of your transit system. They cut 22% of your runs, told you for a year and a half straight they were going to bring them back. Then they said, we're not going to bring back your runs. We have this new thing called Forward Together. And then they said, we can't give you the four together unless you can raise your fare. So it's just been one lie after another, after another, after another, after another. Very similar to a Joe, Joe Biden or a, a Donald Trump. We both get up on a podium and just lie, lie, lie. And we all sit here and, and take it. We just take, we watch these people lying to our faces and somehow we, we're, we're powerless to change anything. Uh, and what can it do? And there are benefits uh, at individual, community, and environmental levels. Uh, I won't go through each of them, but, you know, TOD will help with healthy and active lifestyles. It improves access to jobs. And how, does, how does that go, give you healthy and active lifestyles? 
How does it do that? It doesn't. It's actually the opposite. They're all packed in together. Employment. Uh, you can. Uh, you hopefully give enhanced housing choices. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the environment. Here, live in a box. They all look the same. Go to any city and look at their transit-oriented development. You see, they all look the same. Mental benefits. People and less reliant on private vehicles. Yeah, and that's what they really want. But to become dependent on government, have you just not seen what just happened? If you haven't, if you haven't learned by now that you cannot depend on government, I guess you're never going to learn it. You know, because it's you've got all the evidence you need in front of you how government fucks you all the time. Okay, you pay, you give them your money, you have no say in what they do with it. Shorter trips. More efficient transit, multimodal bikes, scooters, uh, and then from a community perspective, um, Bob Hastings was a big advocate for this. Transportation projects are not simply, you know, you know, a method of getting people made to be. They touch the communities they pass through, and so when we're delivering a transportation project, we should be looking at how it interacts and connects with the community. And TOD is a very useful way of achieving that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is quite helpful. It's not a new concept, transit-oriented development. It's been around for a long time. And uh, in producing this plan, uh, our consultant, MIG, uh, with, with our support and with other materials from TriMet, produced this timeline of you know, the evolution of transit in and around the Portland region. Uh, and as you can see, you know, from from the very start in 1872 to the downtown trolleys to today, you know, transit has evolved as the communities have evolved. Uh, and I like to think, and you know, some there's a bit of a cliche of "old or die." You know, we, we need to be thinking like that. We've got to keep evolving, keep moving forward, trying to improve communities, improving transit, and making you know this a better place to live and work. And and why would we believe that you're Making this a better place to live. Why would we believe that? It was a better place to live in 1980 than it is now. Um, we also, when thinking about TOD and before we start talking about the plan in more detail, wanted to touch on some sample projects. And, you know, these should be, these are probably familiar to many of you. Um, but sometimes TOD sort of, you know, doesn't, it's not immediately what springs to mind. And a good example is the top right-hand corner, Providence Park. Um, you know, we think is a really exceptional example. It's a big, you know, civic, you know, public facility in space uh, with zero car parking, and people recognize that. So when they come to a Timbers game, they do make alternative arrangements for travel in and out. And actually, we think it benefits the experience significantly, particularly for the community that lives in the immediate environment. It doesn't benefit the people that prefer to drive. You're, force, you're forcing them to take transit. Some people don't want to do it, I mean, especially nowadays. Um, the top left-hand side is the Rockwood downtown Rockwood project, which is still in process, but it has the market hall. It has commercial element to it. It's gonna. They're just in the process of building a residential element, um, which would be workforce housing. Um, uh, we have the Beaverton Round here on the bottom left. We have uh, a Renko in top middle. Obviously, Tillicum Crossing, which everyone's very familiar with, and OHSU. And then the bo bottom right-hand side is Lent Town Centre. That's the Oliver Crossing building that was built by uh, Palindrome Communities. See the boxes. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I love it when they talk about transparency. There's no transparency at all at anything that's going on over there. But they always say we have it, but that's just a complete lie. <laughs> um, it was near the haven for crime, I believe. Oh, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, so why why a regional TOD plan? Um, you know, I touched on it on the introduction. Um, TriMet board uh, after we have sort of the Bob and Lancers, uh, who who manages, who's our, our manager and is the director of real estate and TOD put together some guidelines uh, with extensive community engagement. Those were extensive. 
You always hear that, too. That's always their line. Extu ex extensive community engagement, that means nothing. That means nothing. It's all baloney. Approved by the board in May of 20. Approved by the sock puppets, who will prove whatever you tell them to. They do not think for themselves. They are not individuals. They, they follow whatever the general manager asks them to do. And it's always been that way. It's nothing new. It's always been that way. I've been watching these things for almost two decades now. 2020. Um, the purpose of the regional TOD plan is to build on those guidelines and bring give transparency to the program and process. One of the things when I arrived in February of 2020 is that was very apparent, uh, and I think it was apparent to everybody that worked sort of in producing the guidelines and, and getting them approved, was that stakeholders just wanted to understand what was going on and how the process was working. And, and the, the stakeholders, that's your New World Order language. He's using all your New World Order language. Who exactly are the stakeholders? It's, it's obviously not the citizens. Guidelines is a four-page, very dense document with goals and objectives. Doesn't explain how climate's going to implement that plan. And so this regional TOD plan gives that transparency. Yeah, um, sure you it do. has multiple elements to it. We'll go into it, and Fiona will go into it a little bit more detail in terms of the structure. Um, but it outlines, uh, you know, amongst other things, it builds on climate's existing engagement guidelines. And the purpose of that is so that stakeholders can know how and where to engage with the agency, whether they want to engage at a plan level or a program level, or whether they want to engage at a single project. It's a uh, we've been working with Bibiana and her team uh, to basically inventory all the sites uh, and using all the GIS information that we have within the agency, and so that we have a comprehensive list of sites. And that's a dynamic list because it changes with projects and. Our parcels get assigned for operations and so they're no longer TOD or we'll buy, we'll start a new project and buy some new parcels. But once we, with that inventory, we can then evaluate and prioritize those sites. And then finally, here's how, here's how, here's the definition of a stakeholder. One, an independent party with whom each of those who make a wager deposits the money or counter wage, wager. Two, Person with an interest or concern in something, especially a business. The, you know, the final part of the plan, we'll go into the chapters in detail, is what tools can TriMet use, given that TriMet's not a residential or a commercial property developer, what tools can we use to help support the program, uh, whether that's through financing tools, whether that's through other sort of accessibility grants or other yeah, parts and processes. So, so we'll we'll take it. We'll go into a bit more detail. Um, just checking the time on the history of the plan. Uh, this sort of a summary, but as I said, May 2020, we we the guidelines were approved by the board. The plan would never have come together. We applied to ODOT and DLCD for a transport and growth management grant (TGM) grant. Uh, in the spring of 2021, we were successful in that application. They've been fantastic partners. Uh, and, and very, very supportive of this work. Um, uh, so that started the ball rolling in, in spring 21. And then in the summer of 22, we went to the board uh, to sort of, uh, after feedback with various stakeholders internally and externally, to, to make sure that our process for prioritization of sites and evaluation of sites was correct. And then as of, uh, well, it, yeah, it was still last month, in March we presented the plan to the board uh, on its publication, and now we're in the process of yeah, really making sure that everybody internally and externally knows about the plan so that they can refer to it and that we can take additional feedback, and it will evolve as a dynamic and living document. Next slide, please. Um, so content. Um, I'll kick off and then I'll pass it over to Fiona at the, you know, when we sort of get to halfway. But um, we tried to, with all these, you know, TOD like development is fairly involved and complex as a process. So we tried to break it up into, you know, really navigable pieces. Uh, that means that, you know, I'm, you know, people that are not land use or planning professionals or technical experts can actually navigate it. So that includes members of the community. And really, so 
So we did that by basically huh? trying to answer questions. You know, oh, well, introduction, true. why do we need TOD? What's that's 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 to? What's the existing system? Yeah. What do what we have? Say? How ready are? Oh, where are the sites? Uh, how do? Where do we? Where do we, where do we put? Where are we pushing for TOD? That's that's the prioritization say. framework. How do we select what? partners? You know, who are we going to choose? And then actually, how do we execute as chapter five? Um, Right. What what we have here uh, in the next couple just, of slides is, is, is just, this is a sort of some, sample of each of the chapters. And this is, if you're at the town hall, we'll have covered it here. But, you know, chapter one is, is the why. What, what, are, what are our goals? Yeah, why are we trying to push TOD? It includes the section on why, how do you use this you know, Who's it for? Yeah, how do you engage with stakeholders? Um, you know, without going into too much detail, you know, really, um, what is a group, and we will we have to answer sort of go into more details and well, question answers. Um, you know, one of the challenges I think that we face with TOD is, is trying to get the right balance of uses um, at and around stations. And that includes the right amount of density, the right amount of affordable and market rate, the right amount of commercial versus residential. Um, and, and what we you hear that? He just said market rate. He didn't even say affordable housing. He wants market rate. So this is really a profit-making scam. But we, we know that the purpose of government is to funnel money from you and me into the hands of the elites, and they do it with the very, you know, this is one way they do it. It's like all this money will end up going to developers, and they'll make profit. And what, what's a transit agency doing involved with this? Okay, why isn't Metro doing this? They're supposed to be a land use governmental body. Why why aren't they doing this? We do recognize is that where we have a real estate asset, piece of land, you effectively get one chance at development. And if you don't get it right, you've got a problem. So we, we're very cognizant, and this is where... This outreach is really, you know, vital for us because we need all stakeholders to come in and... Yeah, they're always talking about how they do their stakeholders and it's always a lie. Okay, I, I think I've seen enough of this. Over and out.